What's up StarCraft fans, last time we learned how to play level 1 Dehaka, this time we're gonna learn how to play level 1 Han and Horner. So this is a, a very unusual commander because instead of one character, you have two, Mira Han and Matt Horner. So Mira Han uses mercenaries, relatively cheap guys who are mostly infantry based, and Han and, or rather Matt Horner commands the Dominion fleet, so he uses more expensive, specialized air forces. So Regarding your upgrades, talent progression, at level 2 you will gain the Strike Fighter, you will get the Precision Strike, a very good upgrade, but it will not really get unlocked until level 13. So level 2 doesn't really unlock until level 13. Level 3, you will have Assault Gale and uh, Raven upgrades, you, you will have the, uh, the Hangar Base, which will make your Galleons carriers. Ravens will have the Analyzed Weakness, so it's that's a pretty good upgrade, yeah, I think 3 is pretty good. Mercenary upgrade cash, so you'll allow the uh, Reapers to fly. 4 is probably the biggest upgrade among all of the uh, uh, Mirahan units, just because the Flying Reapers will actually like to target air units, which is pretty massive, against, of course, uh, without, of course, uh, using Mad Horror units. You also have this, uh, the uh, call down the fleet. Yeah, so pretty good. This is pretty good. It will actually unlock the top bar. Pretty good. Patience. This will uh, you reduce your unit and research times by thirty percent. Pretty good upgrade actually, since uh, Hot and Horner is a macro based commander. This upgrade thirty percent reduction is pretty good. The minion starport upgrade cash. Don't really use this, especially since. Han and Horner, you mostly use Mirror Han units anyway. A lot of people like playing Horner units, but honestly, uh, if you're going to be expected to carry the game, you probably won't really use a lot of Horner units, unless you're really good at the game. Uh, it's honestly stronger to just go Mirror Han units. This one will allow your depots to get double the, uh, double the uh, supply. Pretty good upgrade. Hellion and Hellbutt upgrade cash. This will get your Tar Bomb for the Hellion. Pretty big upgrade, yeah. For the Hellions, you want the Tar Bombs to slow down enemy forces, and you want the Hellbat uh, to cause the, enemy, uh, the enemies to burn. Pretty good upgrade, yeah. Level 9, pretty good upgrade. Space Station Reallocation, one of your other top bars, another re very good upgrade. Will crash and destroy most enemies quickly, 500 damage, and uh, later on it will get even better. Endurance Training, Hornets regenerate health out of combat, not very impactful. I mean, unless you let go Hornets, but otherwise not very impactful. Advanced Weaponry, your call out, your call out the fleet will uh, have stronger attacks, just an improved version of level 5. So, you notice right off the bat that um, Han and Horner's top bars are kind of split. Like, your Precision Strike will not really get its full power until level 13, where you get your fire upgrade. This will allow you to destroy Void Shards using 2 uh, Precision Strikes instead of 3. And yeah, it's split, so you get the, you get the fighter first, and then you get the upgrade. You get the uh, called out the fleet first, and then you get the fleet upgrade. You get the space station first, and then you get the upgrade. So it's like, it's three top bars, or it's three talent progression upgrades, that they turn into six. So you kind of get the idea that Hot and Horn is already relatively uh, uh, gimped at level 15 because her upgrades aren't quite as varied as the other ones, but is what it is. Significant others, your units will gain bonuses, so the more horner units there are, they will get, uh, the more horners, the more horner units there are, the faster mirror units will attack, and the more mirror units there are, the more health horner units will have. So uh, if you play on lower difficulties, you can probably ramp up, if you play on hard, you can ramp up to brutal at level 5. And if you play on normal, you can ramp up to hard on level 4, and probably ramp up to brutal at level 13, because that's when you get your fire upgrade, which will be very useful on maps like Dead of Night. You can also go it on level 10, once you get all your top bars, so yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Anyway, so we will be on Missed Opportunities. Brian, let's hear about the map. Missed Opportunities is the map where we have to clear out Terezine geysers for Stetman's bots to harvest. Then we have to protect said bots from enemies. If we lose more than one bot on brutal difficulty, we lose the game. 
So thank you to Legendary Sooner and Trent10 who are supporting me in the Immobilization Wave tier, and Darth Ishad Archon who are supporting me in the Pulse Cannon tier. And thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. So the enemy will be Protoss. Again, this is the Maguro map, which I selected because I don't want to keep rolling for an, for an enemy composition. Okay, so you can see that uh, we've started with this thing called the Dominion Starport. And the tech lab. The tech lab seems to be invulnerable. And the, you can only produce mad horror units out of the starport. And you can deploy them instantly. With the Miraha units, you will need to build infrastructure. For that, you will need the Assault Galleon, which we will build soon. You can see Depot pretty normal. SCV builds it and then returns back. It's basically a 1v1 Depot. It has a skin, mercenary skin. But other than that, it's a normal Depot. So go up to 16 supply. I send the worker right away to the expansion. So with, with Hot and Horner, you can afford to be greedy because you have Magmines. The Magmines you have here will be able to hold out the first wave as long as you know the pathing and the timing. Not even the timing sometimes, just the pathing and deploy the Magmines before the wave hits. So I, I could get away with the Command Center first, uh, a very greedy opening. This will allow you to really maximize your resources early on in the game. So it will be more powerful later on with a very strong economy. Next, I, I, start, I start the Assault Galleon. As you can see, the Assault Galleon, as I mentioned earlier, allows you to produce Mirror Han units. And again, it's built by the SCV, select an SCV, build regular structure, and then Assault Galleon. Then place it on the ground where you could build. Right now, continuous SCV production. In fact, I was about to I was thinking of building another galleon, but in fact, I can start a gas here. The gas will allow me to get upgrades for my Mat uh, Mirahan units and a Raven for detection. Because the uh, Mirahan units on their own do not have detection, you will need Galleons. So once the, heli uh, once the Assault Galleon completes, I actually start a Helion. So most guys like to go with Reapers first, and there's nothing wrong with that. I chose to go for Helions instead because they do more damage to armored structures, which rocks are. They can see it will actually take more damage from the Helions attacks, and it's not like a 1v1 Helion. So, look, these is Helions fire grenades, so they're like Marauders, except faster. So, they will bring down the rock relatively quickly as these Magmines get ready to intercept the first wave. And as I mentioned earlier, you don't actually need you to defend first wave because you have magmice. That's why I'm allowed to get away with this command center first. So I only break one rock here at the expansion, or one gas rock. That's because as Mirahan and Hot Matt Horner, you don't need a lot of gas. You just need enough to get your early upgrades, couple ravens, then you're all set for gas. It's all minerals after that. So I'm gonna uh, need to send this guy back to the front. I was kind of not paying attention. There we go. I pull it back. I start massing more dudes. Deploy more of these mag mines. Make sure to protect it. It's my favorite. By the way, for the engine for my for Han and Horner, the engineering bay unlocks the unit specific upgrades, not the attack and armor upgrades. You want the armory for attack and armor upgrades, but for unit specific upgrades, again, you need the engineering bay. He's down. The reason is because you cannot build tech labs onto these galleons, so you have the engineering bay instead. So same thing, same thing as lesson one, or as the Rainer lesson. You just build. Units, as soon as you can afford them. Fight these guys using Helions. And there it is. Aggro, the Stalker, which is pretty outnumbered. You can see I have a sizable force of 7. Now, 9 Helions. And they'll be able to push this with relative ease. I lose 1 Helion, but you can see there's a death effect on here. I researched it earlier off the engineering bay. If you lose the Helion, it will kind of stim the rest of these guys, so they'll be able to shoot faster and be more effective. So you can see 
it's okay to trade. Normally, it's not okay to trade against Amon, but in this case, for Han and Horner, it's relatively fine. So you can, as I mentioned earlier, attack upgrades are gotten from the armory, not the engineering bay, the armory. You use the engineering bay for unit-specific upgrades. The top row will be the Reaper upgrades. The middle row will be the Widow Mine upgrades. And the bottom row will be the Helion and Hellbat upgrades. So you can see that there's a Raven here. What the Raven does is it reveals all the enemies in a wide radius. You can see there are dots here showing that there are indeed enemies approaching. Or at least pre-placed there. And of course, the Raven is a detector, but not, it doesn't detect this far. It can, it can, uh, well, it's basically a mobile uh, center tower, and you know, a, a Raven which can detect. That's right. That you can see I'm getting the cloak for rates. I will need a few rates later. Again, mostly we'll go for Mirahan units, but I will sprinkle in some rates later for mostly for anti air. Start another depot. So you see that I actually have two. If you notice, I actually have two of these SCVs in a control group. Control group eight. And the reason I have those two SCVs in control group eight is because they all they are my depot building SCVs. I, I I use a trick where these two SCVs in the control group, I just recall them constantly, and I just build a depot whenever they're idle. See the way approaching? Magmine will intercept most of them. Helions will take care of the rest. I lose one Helion in exchange for an entire attack wave. That was pretty efficient. If I say so myself. I start plus two attack. See. Bring out a little bit of Amon, but pretty good still. You can see my army is still growing. And Amon is losing entire, entire attack waves. I would say that's a very okay engagement. I think some cloaked forces are nearby. So yeah, this is the Dark Templar competition, meaning we will fight Dark Templar. The good news is I have Ravens, two of them. That will allow me to see Dark Templar and destroy them. Start more depots. Our enemies are picking up the base. Expect them soon. This attack wave. So this attack wave normally goes for the base with more buildings. And that or the expansion with more buildings. Yeah, the, the ten minute attack wave usually goes for the base or the expansion with more buildings. In this case, since I'm soloing, my expansion has more buildings. So they're gonna path through here. But if player two, your ally, has more buildings in their expansion, they'll path around the north and attack this expansion instead. So now I feel confident enough to push out. Again, the same lesson as Artanis, pick and choose your fights. You don't want to fight in range of that cannon, that, that, more, that other stalker, without taking out the frontal, the frontal bases first. So you can see that base has been cleanly destroyed. Clean out these Zalots. Again, pick them off a few at a time, so that your army can ramp up. before having to full on engage this base and now they only have relatively few units which your Wraiths and Galleons can dispatch relatively cleanly you can see I've climbed up to 104 supply and it really it's just all about continuously making units it's pretty much Raynor part 2 you just make units and our task part 2 pick and choose your fight have the SCV approaching here. I can repair my stuff. This one health raven probably needs probably needs a little bit of repair. Yeah, I can see siege it up there. More mag mines. It's it's pretty nice to have mag mines, especially since the enemies attack toward you, so you can kind of pre-place. On the third set, they'll attack through here, through here, and through here. So you can actually just put mag mines there. Or if you're other commanders, you can also put cannons, bunkers, siege tanks, what have you.
Just keep making stuff. Back down to 108 supply. And trading. Down to 104. Next wave is on the way. Lost something there. Down to 101 supply. Yeah, so you will you you will lose units here, but in order to get a in order to get a trade with Iman, you will have to be continuously making units yourself. You can see I did go down to 101, but I've pulled it back to 105. Continue fighting. Shoot that, shoot that set right away. So I drop back down to 97. The good news is they've aggroed these magmites that are pre-placed over here. Another attack wave cleaned out, so I've been cut down to below 100 supply, which means I'll have to regain my strength. And to do that, I just have to keep making stuff. Just keep making stuff, never stop making stuff. Gotta poke in here to thin out their defenses without having to, without having to fight a whole army or a whole guard. Back up to 102 supply. Next attack wave with this map will be at 15.30. First attack wave is at 3 minutes. Second attack wave is at 10. Third is at 15.30. Fourth set or fourth attack wave is at 21.30. And last is 23 or rather 28.03. Put down the magmine here to try and get a favorable engagement. And back here. Bait them into my mag mines to thin them out a little bit. Does pretty good splash. So I was able to macro up until 110 supply, and I just lost 20 supply right there. That is because this wave is pretty huge. Level 1, yeah, you're gonna have to trade a little bit with Amon here. But, you just keep making stuff so that your losses will be replenished. Aggro them here. Fight them off one by one, a few at a time. Get favorable engagements. So the next set, as you can see, I'm, is uh, on the northwest part of the map. So I'm clearing this out. You want to clear. You want to pre-clear this map, especially against mutations. You don't want to clear. You don't want to have to clear these bases when the boss already moving. If the boss already moving. And you haven't cleared these yet, you're probably losing. You haven't lost yet, but you're probably in the process of losing. Because they'll split around here, and the attack waves will arrive while the bots are still in en route to these bases. So you actually want to pre-clear them. A very important part of missed opportunity is, is pre-clearing. In fact, I might go as far as to say that is uh, the lesson for today is pre-clearing. You want to clear all the geyser spots. Before the bots actually move out. And of course, macro. Keep going. You just keep going. Make more. Keep making units as long as they have money to afford units. And of course, now that I have plus 3 attack. I, I Again, I prioritize plus 3 attack for Han and Horner. Because you're going to trade with Amon anyway. And if you lose an, if you lose a unit, you will get a death effect anyway. So it's not that big of it's not that bad of a deal to lose one or two units as long as you don't lose your entire army. Bring those out. You can see magmines being very useful, sending out the attack wave to the point that a couple of rates will take care of it entirely. Moving back. So I kind of I'm kind of just positioning my army around here. So I can cycle back across these bases or these Terrazine geysers and kind of intercept them no matter where they get. Very clean. Next attack wave. Yeah, the spawn on the map. Okay, it's down there. You can see they have spawned over here. It's a biggish wave, but all I have to do is get a concave of sorts to have a favorable engagement. And that's all it needs. Really, it's all it needs. You see, uh, more of my guys are shooting. And, and that's all the advantage I need. 
to clear out. You can see, by the way, that I've cleared to 130, 132 supply. You remember earlier I was at 90. But, again, because I keep making my, I keep remaking my dudes, I keep rebuilding. I have managed to go up to, in fact, 137. Time for the bots to come back. Called out a couple ravens, so instantly, instantly that brings me up to 148, almost 150. There it is, now I'm at 150. You can see, yeah, you, you, you just have to watch the mini-map. Put these guys down. Destroy these guys. Back down to 149, but it's fine. Yeah, so, all I have to do is watch the mini-map. You can see that I just moved my forces to be in place. And unfortunately... If you're if you're uh, if you're new to the game and you don't really know the attack patterns yet, you're gonna have to spend a few games. Honestly, uh, I, I'd like to, I'd love to say that there's a shortcut you can probably study it, but there's nothing like the real thing. Like, yeah, you can you can read guides all you want, but you won't really be able to beat these things or these uh, these challenges until you actually get your feet wet and try out these challenges. Ooh, big storm by a high uh, by a high templar right there. And Colossus, it's scary now a rot river. I target it down to minimize the damage, but it still gets off a few kills. Clear the last set again, pre-clearing guys. You wanna pre-clear an area before the bots start to move. So now that we've fully cleared this area we can let the bots safely move there without fear of getting whacked by the enemies. Whack this little base over here because why not? It, I mean, it's free. It's not necessary, but it, it's definitely easier for a lot of the static defense based commanders to have a cleared spawning point. Because once, if you're able to spawn Camp Amon, that's probably a ideal scenario to lose the fewest units. And dealing the most damage. You can see my army is now a healthy mix of Reapers, Helions, and Hellbats. So, Helions are your infantry. They deal good damage. They deal, yeah, they deal good. Uh, they they deal good damage uh, even to light. But for the uh, for the armored, since the enemy is Protoss after all, they will have a lot of armor. So I put down a few extra Helions here. And for Splash, I pick these w Widow Mines. In the spots where the enemy spawns. So on the last set of shards, or the last set of bots, there are four enemy spawns. Here, in the uh, far north. Here, a far north, slightly to, slightly to the east. And here, far north, way to the far, far east corner. Or far northeast corner, and here to the far east. So I've chosen to camp this area with magmines, so that when stuff spawns here, they'll get shot at right away. By the way, I've... Uh, Gotten up all the way to my AA supply. Pretty good. Build a couple more depots. You can see an attack wave on the map. And then try to intercept it right away. So why don't I just wait for the enemy to hit me? The reason is... The enemies... Will kind of spawn in different places at once. So you want to pre-intercept an enemy force to give yourself time. To run back once you've cleaned up this force. And instead of just waiting for the enemy to hit here. And once they've hit here... The next... Attack wave is already on its way to these bots, so you don't want to scramble. Uh, it's the same lesson for Zoom. Preparation pays off. So, you see the attack. Yeah, you see the attack wave heading over here. You meet it right. You meet it head on, so that you will no longer have to scramble back so far when the next wave hits. Big magmine hits all those forces, softening them up for my units. Attack another again. Another attack wave heading from the far north. I, I, uh, I uh, circle, cycle over there. Fight these guys head on. And I got a pretty good concave over here. Not gonna lie. Pretty happy about this concave. And yeah, um, I don't really have a specific, specific mix of units between Reapers, Helios, and Hellbutts. My, my standard 
is just some of each. I don't really count how many Reapers or Helions I have, just some of each. Though, as a rule of thumb, you want you want to have a lot of very clean. Magma is good. Against Terran, you want a lot of Reapers. Unless it's armored. If it's armored, you want a lot of Helions. If it's armored or Protoss, you want Helions. If it's Roach Zerg, you want Helions. If it's Air Zerg, though, yeah, you want Widow Mines, you want Reapers, you want Helmets. All pretty good units. And here comes the next wave. Army is hitting over. Hostile forces sighted. Be on alert. Attack wave on the way. That's the big attack wave. The last one I talked to you about. 0.803. So, more currently fighting. I've dropped down to 160. You remember, I was almost maxed out earlier, and I've dropped down to 142. 60 is quite a lot in a single fight. And again, these magmines coming in big. They've killed all the ground forces there. All I have to do is run to the north to protect that harvesting bot. Last bot, by the way, on its way back home. Now it goes, and that's game. So all I have to do now is kind of wait for the end. And... There it is. So that's how you play as level 1 hot and Horner. Pretty much the same as normal, except a little weaker, so we'll have to be more careful what you do. So, hope you enjoyed that, thank you for watching. If you have an idea for what else you do, please leave that in a comment. Of course, we can see it's pretty balanced. 17 Reaper, 29 Helion, 8.9 Assault Galleon, 17 Magmite, 17 Wraith. Pretty balanced across the board. So that's what I have, what I have as Hanan Horn, because these units, each of these units buff each other when they die. So you, the more different types of buffs you have, the more favorable your gauges will go. Unless all of your FX actually there isn't like have a But still, pretty effective when you have all those uh, guys stepping up individually. I'll see you guys next time.